watching a set of Crown Vic headlights live on YouTube right now. You're interested? You want to come hang out? Click the link. Hey guys, it's Kevin. Uh, completely spur of the moment thing here. I actually have... Okay. All right, all right. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Well, I actually have my entire recording set. There we go. Did I do that twice? Hey guys, One, it's Kevin. Hey guys, two. it's Kevin. I did. Shoot. <laughs> hey guys, it's Kevin. Uh, completely spur of the moment thing here. I actually have. There we go. I'm going to delete one of those. There we go. All right, well, anyway, I have my uh, entire workbench completely, it's crazy. My, my, my actual desk and bench and all that stuff is usually on the other side of the shop here. <laughs> but I have everything by the workbench. I have no idea if this is going to work out, but we're going to just mess around with this before I start doing this on a regular basis and just kind of see, you know, how this pans out. So let me see if I can get some sounds really quick before we start here, because I don't want this to be um, just filled with dead silence all the time. You know what I mean? So let's see here. Let's go start listening. Let's play that. Okay. I think we're live. Let's take a peek. Are we live? I think. I am live. How about them apples? Excellent. Is it looking all right? It sure is. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like we're live and it looks like I can get moving on this. And we'll turn that off. Okay. I guess I'll get started and uh Oh no, wait. I should play some music or something in the background. Whoa. Jeez, that's loud. Holy Moses. Let's see, can I stream? That's really loud. Audio, let's see here. Doesn't look like I can add audio without screen sharing, so that isn't going to work. I was trying to play with some music in the background that, uh, that would allow me, so it's not completely dead silent, you know what I mean? All right, cool. Show mouse clicks. Let's see here. Audio. Broadcast system audio now.
Let's see, what does that sound like? Is that bad? <laughs> Is that bad? Is that loud? I don't know. I don't want that to be too loud. Is that loud? I don't know. I don't want that to be too loud. That is kind of loud, isn't it? Let's bring her down. That is kind of loud, isn't it? All right. Let's. How about now? Yeah, that's fine. We'll run with it. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. We'll get started. So um, what I'm going to do actually first is turn down my AC so it's not blowing into the microphone. Let's do that low all the way down. There we go. All right, cool. So anyway, all right, I think we can finally get started. So I have my camera here, which is going to be looking at me, obviously, so that way I can talk and address you guys if you decide to kind of interact with me. But also behind me is the wall that I use when I, um, when I uh, use like to, to adjust and aim the headlights and stuff. So what I'm going to do is just start getting headlights open, start getting the projectors ready for retrofit. Um, and you should be able to see everything here in front of me on the desk. And I'm going to do my best. Um, making that as visible as possible. Um, this is totally spur of the moment. There isn't any planning. I literally just woke up and said, you know what, let me, uh, let me try to get this done today. So I'll go ahead and um, warm up the oven and get going on that. All right, so I'm setting the oven to 235 or 240 is fine. We'll let that preheat for a while. And going to start with a brand new set of headlights. Actually, let me see if I can move the camera over here, see if this is any better. There we go. What are we thinking? Cody, what's happening, man? Yeah, I think this is kind of like a complete spur of the moment thing. Like I'm not even really like prepared. It's totally, <laughs> it's totally crazy. So I thought, what the hell, you know, I've been wanting to do this and I figure the only way for me, the only way for me to actually do this is just to just jump in. You know what I mean? I mean, I know I probably won't get a whole bunch of eyeballs on this, but I figure this way, I can start and just kind of hang out and see what happens. Okay. Brand new set of depot headlights. Toss that to the side. Hey Cody, question, how does it sound? I mean, as far as I have like audio playing in the background but it seems like it's skipping and i'm assuming my microphones my mo my microphone sounds okay but i don't want to uh assume sounds like it's skipping Excellent. Thank you. Awesome. Hi, Brooke. Good morning. How was your sleep, butthead? Oh, nice. Almost hit the camera. Where'd we go? There it is. Nice. I just shot, shot one of the headlight clips right at the camera. Oopsie. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, that's okay. At least you're you're up now and getting ready for Cedar Point, I assume, huh? Is, is this as, as satisfying as it is when I watch like phone reviews? Nice. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, well, I guess it, can, it depends, Cody, exactly what you are uh, referring to as up north. I am in northeast Ohio, so it is northern to most states in the country. Um, but, you know, I guess north could also mean <laughs> something substantially further than that. But, yeah, I'm in, uh, I used to live in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and, well, actually, my whole life I was kind of born and raised in Cleveland. And we, uh, what, two years ago now, it was time, man. I was, I found an opportunity to get out. Um, and we did, and we're living in the country now, about uh, an hour and some, about an hour or so from Cleveland, and I could not be happier. I say country, but it's a more it's just a more rural rural area. This clip is being a pain in the rear, and of course I can't reach my screwdriver. Oh, come here, come here. There we go. Got to improvise. Okay. Okay. It's all right. Headlights are open. They are ready to go in the oven. Um, what I'm going to do now is sort of prep the projectors. There's kind of a lot of like little things that I need to do to get that set up and ready to go into the headlight. So we'll start with that. And in this case, I'm using my stage one kit, which is Acme um, H1 projectors. And there was a small mishap with one of the other ones. So that's why there's no lens in this one. And I had to replace the lens. So I got to prep that one anyways for this. I'm showing this camera when I actually have this camera. See, look, no lens. should be wearing gloves right now. I just realized I didn't put any gloves on this morning. Oh, shoot. Come on, punk. There we go. Fat fingers over here. Come on. Let's 
just get this out of the way. I feel like that's in my way. So, there we go. That projector, whoop, that projector is fixed. Like I said, I had a, a mishap with my laser. I use a, um, a laser to, to etch, you know, the, the, the different designs and stuff on the lenses. And I had, uh, my laser went oopsie daisy. So I had to, to replace the lens on that one. So that's garbage. Okay. 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 There's that. All right, so I'm going to start getting the projectors ready. Um, there are, I don't know, a thousand different ways to, to mount the projector into the headlight. Um, what I, I know it's just you, Brooke. I'm just in here talking for anybody that actually would watch this after the fact. So, um, so this projector itself, is uh here we go this projector actually has a thread on the back here which i would say 90 percent of the other people building headlights for the crown vic are going this route um i know i've seen some changes recently where others are starting to do it the way that i do but uh i'm going to show you the way but we do not rely on this the way i do it is a lot harder it's a lot e you know it's not as easy um, but it yields a much cleaner look and as far as I'm concerned, that's the only thing I'm con you know That's the only thing that I'm worried about So we'll do that I do need um, What do I need here we need Some screws I mean, I guess you're all right <laughs> One, Two three four of those So the way I'm going to do this is get these, these projectors ready with the screws and stuff, but I'm not going to use four of them on this one. I'm only going to do three. Oh, someone else likes me? All right. Happy to hear it. Well, Cody, the, uh, the daughter is under age and is not able to drive at the moment. So, <laughs> uh, at some point, yeah, she, I do believe that she will, uh, will have a nice set of headlights at some point. Yeah. Yeah. She's only, she's four, she turns 14 tomorrow anyway. So happy birthday to her. Well, you know, this is a question that we, we often talk about because, um, you know, it's only a year and a half to two years away from now. Um, you know, we, hold on. I don't know if you can hear me when I'm screwing this in. Um, so her first car, you know, we're kind of borderline. 
you know, she's a, she's a really good kid. Um, and I, I do trust her a lot, but you know, we don't want to buy her, you know, obviously the nicest car in the world. We don't want to buy her a brand new car really. But the thought was if we can buy her something that's fairly new ish and you know, something small, something preferably front wheel drive. I mean, I do want her to have like, you know, something reliable and something I know, which obviously brings us to like the Mark, the Grand Marquis, Crown Vic and all that stuff. The problem with that is that, you know, we do get some really, really heavy winters um, and rear wheel drive cars is not the way to go, especially for a new driver uh, with the crazy snow and all the ice and stuff that, that happens up here. So it'll probably end up being something I don't know, like a Honda Accord or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I keep telling her that we're going to buy her a jalopy. Just a complete POS. All right, so that's the right one. We're going to do the left on this side. That's exactly it. Yeah, the, the the Honda Accords, I feel like, you know, um, it's kind of a toss up between that and the Civic. But I, I, I just like, you know, the smaller cars, something that I know is reliable, you know, and I I'm not a foreign car kind of guy. Typically, um, most of everything that I've ever really driven has always been, you know, quote unquote, American, but um, or domestic. But anyway, we. Uh, are starting to branch out a little bit and at least keep our our uh, our options open. You know, we don't want to pass up on a good car just because it's not made, you know, just because it's like Korean or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Holy crap, really? 290.85? Wow. No Escalade for that kid. I told her that she needs to that she needs to get rich and buy daddy an Escalade. I tell her every day. I said, "You need to get rich. I'm tired of working." <laughs> All right. So the projectors are ready, and you can see that I have two projectors ready with the screws and the mounting. Oh, haha, I'm an idiot. I didn't screw that one down. But I have the screw, the top screws offset, bottom screws are exactly aligned, which I should probably screw in that bottom one. No, not today, Brooke. Thank you. Okay. Is that okay? It's kind of driving me nuts. Can you hear? Uh, can you guys hear the music that's playing in the background? Um, because the the music that I hear coming out of my computer is really choppy and it's like cutting out. So. It's kind of driving me nuts, but I'll ignore it if, it if it actually sounds decent on your end. Okay. Okay, so it's not cutting out for you. Okay. And my voice sounds okay, like over top of it. Like I just, I'm concerned that the audio is too loud because for some reason, I mean, I have it down out of a hundred. I have it down to like eight and it still sounds really loud on my computer. Okay, cool.
All right. Excellent. Appreciate you. You let me know on that. All right. Projectors are ready. Now, what I need to do is grab my template. I have like a projector template that I use. I'll show you that in a second here. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. All right, so to answer your question, my daily driver is a Dodge Durango. Um, my last Panther car, I actually sold uh, a couple of years ago, unfortunately. I had, I had driven down to Atlanta from Ohio, from Cleveland, and bought a 04 Marauder that had like, I don't know, 30,000 miles on it, something like that. I can't remember exactly what it had on it, but silver birch, you know, light flint interior, sunroof, spoiler. I mean, the thing was gorgeous. It was everything I wanted. Um, but some circumstances changed over the years, and the garage that it was stored in was falling apart, and I had nowhere else to put it. Uh, it was kind of scary because that car was in such good shape. Like I didn't, I didn't feel like I wanted to be the reason that that car was uh, damaged or anything like that. So uh, we ended up just selling it. I had a guy drive all the way from Poughkeepsie, Arkansas uh, with his wife, a truck and trailer, drove all the way here one trip, one way, uh, I'm sorry, straight through loaded it up, loaded it on a trailer and drove straight home <laughs> didn't did, i mean that was a long drive um he since then sold it which sucks um his circumstances changed and he sold it and now the car is actually in texas i know you said you're in texas um let me see actually where did you say you're from i forgot i'm an idiot oh i'm dumb Okay, you just said Texas. All right, so yeah, it's uh, it's in Texas right now. So you're you're a lot closer to my car than than I am, which sucks. All right, so the oven is preheated. I'm gonna toss the first headlight into the oven, and I'll be right back. Hey Siri, set a timer for seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay, so we'll let that warm up. Um, as I said before, I have it on 235. Anywhere between 220 and 240 is fine. I leave it in there for seven minutes. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'd love to find a good low mileage Marauder. Maybe once we get things back to normal, it's day expensive just now. To, yeah, I know. So that's my problem. Like um, just before all of these, all of these different um, issues that are causing all the price hikes and stuff. You know what's nuts about this is that we were really ready to buy a car only a couple of years ago. And, you know, we were at a point where we were going to buy a house and then I was, you know, the, the agreement me and my, you know, my wife and I had was she gets a house, I get a car. So I was ready to spend a fair amount of money on a car. And, you know, that was a few years ago, things have changed and it's, it's, <laughs> it's absolutely, it's absolutely bonkers right now. So that a car is completely out of the question. All right, so I'm going to need, what do I need here? I feel like I'm drawing a blank. Nope. Got my reverse pliers 
and my flathead screwdriver to get these lenses off. Um, for anybody who actually cares about what's going on here, where the headlight itself is in the oven, uh, there are two types of, of sealant that the headlights use. Uh, one is uh, rubber butyl, the other is permaseal. Permaseal has permanent in the name, so it's meant to stay on. So it is a lot harder to work with. So because of that, I try to spend a little extra money knowing um, the brands that I do use offer butyl headlights. It is a lot easier to get into them and uh, you know, whatever, it is what it is. The, these ones are, are higher quality anyway, so it's even better yet. So, hey Siri, how much time left? This is a really long seven minutes. I got everything pretty much ready. Um, Brooke, I said no. Please stop asking. Thank you. Let me think. I feel like I'm drawing a blank. I probably could get the bulbs and stuff ready. Kid, you're driving me nuts. I could make I could make you even more mad and block you from the live. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Bro, I'm being serious. Stop. I'm not kidding. Knock it off. <laughs> yeah, I know. This kid drives me freaking nuts. Absolutely bonkers. Yeah, it's my fault you're a nutcase. Good point. Devon, what up, man? My daughter is almost two, and I can't wait for her to get older. I got to tell you what. Now that my daughter is going to be 14 tomorrow, I wish she was two again. <laughs> she was so cute. Yeah, that's always good too. That's a, that is a good stage, um, and it does get better. I promise. And the good news is for me, my daughter actually still really loves me. I'm actually really happy about that because one of the things I was afraid of is as she got older that she would just kind of grow out of that, um, kind of grow out of that uh, that stage. But she she harasses me. She she does harass me quite a bit. Um, overall, she's a good kid, and overall, she loves me more than her mom. So. <laughs> That's funny. Smiling and dialing. There you go. Making some calls. Making some calls today, are you, Devin? So, these 
stage one projectors come with this stupid ass clip and I hate these daggone things. My fingers are too fat for this nonsense. Oh, there goes my timer. Hey Siri, stop. Okay, projectors are ready. Yay. <laughs> oh, shucks, Devin. Thanks. All right, I got to go get those headlights out of the oven. Uno momento. Actually, I'll grab this one and put that in the oven. Siri, set a timer for seven minutes. Okay. No, the, the music that you hear in the background is completely royalty free and allowed to be used in, in live streams. Okay, so let's back this up a little bit. You can kind of see how soft this is and just like that. Oh yeah, that's always good. I like nine viewers. Nine viewers, whoever you are, thank you. Like this video right now, please, right now. <laughs> All right, we got a headlight open. It's my favorite part, the old Swiss cheese. Looks good. Okay. Now, important step, put this thing away so it doesn't get scratched or dirty during the building process. Okay, so this headlight is open. We got the second one in the in the oven right now. Um, what I gotta do here is clean out, not clean the channels, but the se the sealant that's in here. You have to kind of lay this flat so the new sealant, when you put it in there, has somewhere to sit. So let's run that down here. Give it a nice, a nice bed to lay on. All right, so that one's open. Now at this point, what I'm going to do, and it's going to be really hard. I think I think it might. Yeah, she really is. I'm just going to ignore it from this point forward. I'm, I'm done with that. So what I'm going to do is set my reference point on the wall behind me. So what I'll do here is get my connector. Let's see what bulb we have in here. Sylvania, perfect. So 
put the old headlight back together. Now I'm gonna plug it in. Okay, so this is the point where I'm going to power up the halogen bulb, shine the light on the wall itself behind me so that way I know where to aim the projectors. Mm. Shucks, there we go. Turn that on. Ooh, whoops. There we go. Okay. All right, so it's kind of hard to demonstrate um, what I'm doing here, but what I'm going to do is take a clamp and clamp this to the bench right there. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can actually see that part of it, but I have a clamp holding the, the headlight down onto the bench so it doesn't move. Um, let's see. I'm actually going to make a mark on this wall. which I normally don't have to do this, but because I had to move my bench around, uh, I want to make sure that I have this properly set. Somewhere in that range looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. Okay, so what I did is I marked, I don't know if I can do this, there we go. So I marked a spot right there with tape and uh, that's kind of like where the top of the step is going to be and the, the top part of the beam pattern is going to go this way. So you'll see what that looks like when I put, actually put the projectors in here. Very therapeutic. Well, I've been called uh, a lot of things, but uh, doing any sort of video that would be considered therapeutic is not something I thought I would ever hear. <laughs> so I appreciate that. And uh, what is SolidWorks? Should I know what that is? Sitting here working on SolidWorks. All right, so while I have that, since I made the mark on there, I'm also gonna mark the bench, showing me where I have this headlight laid, which is right here. Stop that. All right, so this is headlight number one. And pull the bent, pull the clamp. This one's ready to disconnect. Okay, move that one to the side and go grab the other one out of the oven after. What did I do with my rag? There it is because otherwise I will burn the living daylights out of my hand. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, she's hot. Uh, I have some CAD software and it's that is, that's actually the only reason why I haven't uh, pulled the trigger on this uh, rather expensive 3D printer that I want because there are so many parts that I need done that I could use, like, like have it made. we hot. But it's something that I'm just, I just don't know how to come up with the modeling, the models and stuff. I don't know anybody local that could do stuff stuff like that either. There we go. Getting prints out of my machine shop to build assembly parts. I use AutoCAD too, just depends on what I'm doing. Company pays for it all. $7,000 a year. Sweet. So listen, I'm being serious here. Um, 
if I, like, I don't know how I would do this, but I mean, are you, like, could you design parts for me? Like, I have, there's so many uh, ideas that I have that I'm not going to say on this live here, but I would, I would love to talk in person, or private, I mean, about some pieces and parts that are going to make my job here a whole lot easier. And I also have, um, you know, other accessories and parts that I'd have for sale. So, or that I would have for sale, um, that I would, you know, then import to a 3d printer that I purchased. So if this is something that you could do, I mean, I'll pay you like whatever we got to do, design the parts and do whatever I need to do. I'll ship you the pieces and parts that I need and kind of explain what I want and kind of go from there. Of course, he says, dude, I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm very, 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 very serious here. So hopefully we can seriously do something together because I, I have a lot of ideas <laughs> and I've been, I've been putting them all on hold because I have, I have a, um, a bamboo labs printer that I really want to buy. I've had it in my cart for the past six months. I just haven't pulled the trigger because of everything else, uh, going on. Hormel's three ladies, one turn. Oh, so you could even, no kidding. So you could even make parts. Dang. Dude, that's insane. All right, so let me actually lay this bed of adhesive down. No, see, um, I don't have any files or anything. That's actually what I'm looking for because I don't know how to design uh, the pieces and parts that I need. So that's actually what I'm asking for. I hope I, I, hope I wasn't um, you know, unclear on that. Sorry, I'm still getting uh, messages and stuff. All right, well, so let me ask you this. Um, I see that you're saying that, uh, you you know, some of your designers can, or engineers can probably, you know, build something or draw something up. I mean, is, do you know what, like approximately what some of these design things might cost? I mean, look, I'll give you a really simple one. All right. This one is, this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, I don't know if you saw my led projector headlight for the crown Vic, um, one of the biggest reasons why I haven't done it yet is, and this is simple. Like, I feel like this part of it's like really freaking easy. Um, the one thing that I'd really like to do is when, and you'll see here, if you're going to stay, I don't know how long you're going to stick around, but you'll see that once I cut, I'm going to cut the back side of this off and the projector is going to be sticking through the hole. And then there's going to be three screws. What I'd really like to have made is a, like a cap with three screw holes that also has like a channel, like a small channel around where I can lay in some of the headlight sealant, kind of like, like these little channels are here. And then this way, when I am done behind the headlight, instead of me using um, epoxy and stuff, which again, you'll see later if, I, if you stick around long enough, um, I could just put this cap through the screws and then just thread it on and then just put some Loctite on the bolts or something like that. So, and then that way it's actually fully enclosed because right now the projector itself will actually be sticking out of the rear of the headlight. So you'll see what I mean um, some, at some point, but that's what I have uh, planned for this. So, all right, let's get this headlight. Let me put this lens over to the side here.
No kidding. I mean, that's really all I need is a prototype and then the drawing itself because I, I would probably just print, print this stuff here myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's awesome, dude. I, I, I'm definitely interested in talking about this. So let's, let's keep an open line of communication so we can, um, we can get this, uh, get some of these things going. It was one Cheeto <laughs> and there is water in here. I promise. <laughs> All right. So this headlight is ready to be aimed much like the first one. Let's get this sucker turned on and see where we're at. Same exact spot. Love it. All right. All right. So I'm actually really excited because I have um, a really huge video lined up that's going to be coming out hopefully in the next couple of weeks. I'm excited about that one, but I'll keep that one under wraps just for a little while longer. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this headlight is aimed and ready to go back to get cut up. Let's make sure. Yep. And you can see the, it's aimed exactly to the same tape mark that I put the other one, which is exactly what we need. Okay. Let's go ahead and disconnect and start tearing these suckers apart. This is where it gets kind of fun. It's been kind of just prepping here this whole time. Now we get to let's see here. Actually, I do need to do something here on this phone. Hold on a second. All right, so now that this one is, they're both aimed. I have both headlights aimed uh, to the reference points. And if you can see that, I have some tape marks, which I know looking at these probably means nothing to you. Um, but these tape marks mean a lot to me. So I'm gonna uh, use these tape marks after cutting this up to then get the projectors aimed. So the first step obviously is to disassemble the entire thing and get ready to cut this thing up. Okay. I actually need to run my compressor hose over here too, I forgot. Come on, prick, get out of there. All right. Got to take this center reflector out. Gotta pull that guy out. We don't need that anymore. And I have no idea where my garbage cans are. That's fun. Oh, there's one. I made it on the floor. See if I can make this one. Oh, brick. Went in and out. All right. So now that these are both, the reflector uh, cap is removed. Now it's time to cut a big old hole in the inside.
It's be it's only better because you made it. <laughs> no, 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 no. You yell Kobe if you made it. You yell LeBron if you miss it. I'm allowed to say those things. I'm from Cleveland. <laughs> I give LeBron a bad rap. I actually love the guy. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Colby. All right. So this is... Okay, Cody, let's talk about this for a minute, okay? So I explained to you that I needed the cap made for the back of the headlight. Here's just another example of a tool that I need, okay? I have a wooden dowel, okay? Okay. I use this as a stencil, or not a stencil, but like a tool so that I can cut a hole perfectly center there in, in through here. So what I do, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Oh wait, actually we'll use this one because it's got some light. You could see how wide open it is now, but what I would love, this would be a nice metal part to have, is you could see these teeth right here on the outside. What I do is I actually use them to line up to the teeth on the inside of the headlight. I'll show you in one second. There we go. You can kind of see that here. And then I use that to drill to send my hole saw through. So um, because it's wood and it does get bored out, if I don't replace this frequently, which you can see that it's kind of bored now, I can't keep the um, the drill bit straight because it's now it's, you know, <laughs> much wider than it should be. Oh, so you got to yell the name before you throw it. See, I didn't know that. I'm a, I'm a yell after the, after the shot is made or missed. <laughs> that's, that's what I've always done. Okay, so let's cut this guy open. All right. Actually, I want to check something before I cut that open, before I finish that all the way through. All right, so this is perfect. So what I'm doing here at this point is um, the bulb would normally go in this hole here. I have a projector bowl that I've kind of had this for many years now, and you can see I keep the screws in this one. Instead of me using the ones that I'm actually gonna be building, I just use this template uh, to mark, the, to kind of score the holes on the inside of the chrome. So this part of it, takes a lot of finesse in making sure that you actually get this right. Because otherwise, it's gonna be offset, off-center, tilted, crooked in some, you know, in one way or another. There we go. No, I don't have any vices. I don't have any clamps. I do all this by with my with my tools and my bare hands. Although it probably makes more sense to get some sort of clamp or a vice or something on the bench. <sighs> okay, so um, what I'm going to try to show, which I don't know if this is going to come across very well. Yeah, this is super not going to work. But I have um, I use the screws to score this chrome reflective surface here, 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 and here. So what I'm going to do now is finish my, um, hole saw here. There we 
go. And for those of you wanting to know what the hell that looks like, basically I'm using the template to hold the headlight, or I'm sorry, using the, the dowel to hold the, to hold the headlight and I'm screwing into the dowel, which obviously is marking the headlight where I need it to. And now that that's scored, I can remove the dowel and finish cutting all the way through. I apologize if that's really loud. I have no idea how loud that is for you guys. There it goes. And now, a little dustier later, we have a big old hole in the back, perfectly center where I needed it. And dummy me is dumping all this dust on the bench. All right, give me a minute. Sorry, I know that was loud. Okay, the com whoop. compressor's on, it's gonna be running for a minute here. Lost two. Okay. Well, while it's still running, I better get this out of the way. Oh, dang it. think I can turn the compressor off so that don't turn back on. Not for a while anyways. Okay. Okay. 
All right, so. I have both headlights open, both headlights cut. Now I need to make my holes so I can get the projectors mounted. Um, this one. I probably should have done this before I cut it, but that's okay. Now that I have my headlights open, I have them ready to be uh, drilled out for the holes uh, where the projector is going to mount. So, got my little step bit here, little guy. And we're going to start drilling some holes. Actually, wait. Nope, I lied. Drill the holes. out of the four. Now what I think I want to do is just confirm my holes are centered where they need to be, which seems to be okay. Where is, there it is. No. Darn it. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, you're right. We do need something for the Arrow Panthers. Um, I've addressed this a couple of times, but I understand that, you know, my videos aren't really getting out there the way they should. But the Arrow headlights are not something that I'm able to do at the moment. And I'll tell you why exactly. So the problem is with those, there are, how do I explain? So actually, let me grab this headlight that's clean. If you look, 
on this headlight, you can see all of the like different squares and different sections that allow, these are actually what reflect the light where it needs to go. Now, the arrow headlights don't have that. The arrow headlights have a, a really smooth chrome finish on the back. And then the lenses themselves are what does the, the sort of reflecting or the pushing forward of the light. Now, the, because of that, when I install projectors or, you know, any sort of anything really inside of those, those headlights behind that lens, it makes anything that, I, that you would have gained by putting this in there completely useless. So like, I can physically do it, but like, I'm not about trying to take people's money and have them not yield the results that they're expecting because, you know, what I do is not cheap, of course. And I don't, I don't expect anybody to have to fork out money and not actually have something in return. It won't look cool because it's going to be hidden behind that, that stupid lens. So until I can get like, you know, a way to vacuum form the lenses or something like that, there's, there's really no, um, no, no way to do it on that particular car, unfortunately. So thank you for, for bringing it up. I appreciate that, but sadly I'm not able to offer that at the moment. So, all right. Uh, I apologize ahead of time. I got to make some cutting. I don't know how loud this will be. So give me a moment. Yeah, so that's actually what that what this entire thing is about for me. Um, obviously, I'm here to make money. There, that's not a secret. There's no there's no way about doing this without the option, you know, without the idea that I'm here making money. That's a given. But still, at the end of the day, I'm not about. I want to make sure that whatever you spend, that you're actually receiving, you know, equal amount back in return. So I appreciate that you acknowledge that because that's, you know, that, that part is really important to me. I, I just won't, I won't be doing that without, you know, you actually happy with whatever you're getting in return. Oh. All right. So. Let's, let's see if I can grab my, my scissors because those are out of reach. There we go. Because I don't need this. And I don't feel like taking the connectors apart. So we're just going to scissor this rubber grommet right off. Although I should be keeping these things because I do use them, <laughs> but I'm a little lazy today. Okay, there we go. Let's blow this one out a little bit. Let's see if our holes are anywhere close to where they need to be. Yes, sir. Right in. All right. That's what we were looking for. I'll show you that in a second here. So this is basically what the end result eventually will look like or something similar to. I'll show you the finish, obviously, if you're going to stick around, but basically that's pretty much what we were going for. So I'm going to remount this to the table to ensure that I have the holes opened up wide enough so that way we can get the proper adjustment. Where is my clamp? There it is. Grab 
have a ballast. and get some reference on the wall here, see if we're even remotely close. Okay, give her some juice. And for those who were sticking around in the beginning, we're aiming for, let's see, Eh, that tape line right there. And I can tell already that this is, for whatever reason, incredibly crooked. So we got some fixing to do, but height is good. Let's see where we at here. So we're gonna go down on the single hole and upward on double hole okay so what I'm gonna do now that I'm I know that I'm incredibly crooked I didn't do a very good job at getting that adjusted the right way continue making these or keeping these holes as small as possible in the back here because this is where the screws are going to go and ultimately you're going to put a washer and a nut on that but you know I don't use very big washers because I don't want them to be so big and bulky on the back end of the headlight but at the same time the ones that I have are small enough where they can still wiggle their way out of these these holes so now we got to test again See if we're anywhere remotely close where we need to be this time. Because I think I was way off. Let's try it again. It's a little better. Not quite. What am I missing now? Okay, top hole needs to come over. Easy fix. Try it again. I don't know why this one was so crooked. I don't know what I did wrong. Just a slight bow left that I got to work out. Where are we at here? So we need to go this way. So 
down and up, down. Okay. Hello, wife. How are you? Pretty sure that'll do it, but who knows? You guys going to Cedar Point today? What time are you guys heading out? Any idea? Probably soon, huh? Yeah, we bought Brooke a season pass for, she got all good grades. She got all A's and B's last school year. So we got her a season pass and she goes quite a bit with her boyfriend and his family. So we occasionally, go, or I went once, but Mary's trying to go a little bit more. Yep, that's the one. So if you remember, whoever was in here earlier, how crazy that other beam pattern is. This is exactly what I was going for, right there. Yeah, that looks good. So now, now that I have this one, oh Jesus, hello, yes, shocked. Now that I have that aimed where I want it to, what I'm gonna do, guys, I almost died. <laughs> Just kidding. What I'm going to do now is thread on a bolt, or I'm sorry, a nut and a washer onto these screws on the inside of this projector right here. And then what this is going to do is act as a stopper. So I got to adjust these screws or these bolts. I mean, these, gosh, I can't talk today. I got to adjust these nuts and the washers so I can aim the projector where I need it to be. First, what I'm going to do now, actually, before I get close, because once I get to this point, I like to just put the projector in and leave it. I'm going to drill three holes. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. I'm adjusting the nuts. These three holes, two of which are going to act as a extra ventilation for the headlight. So I'm going to drill another hole here and here for the extra vent and then I'm going to drill one more hole down at the bottom so the wires can work out the bottom there. All right, come on. There we go. So that's what I was after. We got two extra vents and then a little place for the wires to exit at the bottom.
So I'll show you here in a second. Once I get this mount, once I get this threaded in here where I need it to be, I'll show you exactly what what I'm after. Excellent. It doesn't look like anything. Well, that one might fall through a little bit. We'll have to see where it sits. So I might need to use a little bit of a bigger washer, which is okay. I'll show you here in a second. Just bear with me here a moment. Make sure that I don't kill myself this time. <laughs> almost perfect almost like I know what I'm doing not quite though almost so I actually I am gonna grab a bigger washer let me do that now okay let's shut that off And what I'm going to do is start adjusting some of these a little bit more. There we go. That's more better. Okay. So now what I'm doing here is adjusting these uh, the nuts that are on the, the last ones that I just threaded on here. So that way I can get, get these projectors a little closer than where they were. Okay, location is right. Just need to raise them up. So what I'll do is I'll bring in the top one all right brief hold peeps hold on a second All right, so trouble. What up, man? What's happening? Glad to have you. Glad you stopped by. Right now, I uh, already have the headlights opened, and I am currently aiming the projector to some pre. There's some markings that I made at, during the opening process, so we are getting really close to having this one. Let's push that one out a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, have fun. Be careful, okay? Chilling man at work. Wanted to say what's up. Hell yeah, man. I appreciate you stopping by. Stick around as long as you can, you know? Kind of hang out. But, you know, I understand you got, got some stuff you got to take care of. I, under, I get that. Appreciate you stopping in though. I might start doing this just for the hell of it. 
Man, this one is being a complete pain in the ass. So close, but yet so far. I'm not gonna lie, I'm struggling a little bit with this one. This one's giving me some, some headache, but we're just about there. Yep, I like that. That's it right there. So now that I have that on there, I can go ahead and put a washer, which is kind of hard to see with my fat ass arm in the way. There we go. So I'll put a washer on the back side of each one of these. And then also thread on the nut to kind of lock it in place. Meanwhile, still maintaining some level of um, orientation, making sure that everything stays the way it's supposed to. And this, this is a part that's actually probably the most tedious of this entire process, to be honest with you. But I'm also not making excuses a little bit out of my element. I moved some things, a bunch of stuff around to make this happen today. Let's see if I can get this tight enough. Ooh, that might be too big. We are so close. I'm actually going to drop that top down a little bit. What are you, what are you, what are you, what are, what are you thanking me for, Devin? <laughs> what did I do to deserve thanks this morning? Huh? 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 That's it right there. Yeah, yeah, I realized I got the, my iPad here in front of me. I realized that my big old arm was in the way. <laughs> that is way too high now. Ay, caramba. Yeah, see, at this point, I think, I mean, I don't like making excuses. I said that before, but. I feel like if I wasn't, didn't have to move all this stuff around and I'm kind of disorganized at the moment, I feel like this part of it would have been done. This is a whole, this is not, doesn't normally take me this long.
just a little bit higher. Okay, I'm happy with that. I may have actually said that already, but I mean it this time. Okay, so, yeah, that looks good. So in the camera, it looks like it's kind of bowing downward a little bit, but it's probably because I have a really wide lens on. I'm not sure. I guess it is kind of bow, bowed a little bit. Let me... good all right so I'll give you a close-up here in a moment but I think these screws are tight enough where I'm happy with its adjustment there we go excellent yeah that's exactly what we're looking for so what I don't know if anybody was here earlier today when I started this but I made this tape mark right here and there was this, like this really big blotch of light with the halogen reflectors. So I put the hot spot of the projector right here, right where it needs to be. And that should yield the performance we're looking for. Heck yeah, looks good. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And what I'll do is I'll show you real quick what that looks like back here. So you can see we got a, a nut and bolt here, here, and here with the wires exiting the bottom. I have a vent and a vent here as well. So I'm going to do this to the other headlight. And then uh, after that, we're going to move on to shortening these threads obviously we don't need that anymore we'll cut those off and then we'll put some epoxy around the nuts and bolts here to make sure that they are permanently set okay okay um that's a good question so in this instance this headlight is a pretty simple um a pretty simple projector that's that we're not doing anything wild like what i think you're referring to this is the high beam and low beam. Now, when I do builds that we add a second projector into the turn signal section, uh, there's a couple ways around the turn signal. So um, my favorite way is to then add halos around the headlights, uh, you know, whether it's RGB or just you know, white or whatever with the switchback feature. Basically what we would do then is tie the halos into the turn signals. So no matter what color the headlight or the halos are set, whether it's you know white, green, pink, purple, doesn't matter. When you activate your turn signal, they turn orange, they'll flash with your blinker, and then when you complete your turn, they'll go back to uh, whatever color you had it set. So that's, uh, that's the way around that if, I, if I'm doing a second uh, projector, which I will be doing, I actually have th two or three of those lined up, so stay tuned for that. I have actually a really a couple of cool videos on my YouTube channel now uh, showing some of those features. Um, you could probably find that on there pretty easily. All right. So I'm going to move on to the second headlight. And get the other projector mounted before I move on to cutting all the, all the bolts off. Sorry, if you can hear me chewing, sorry. <laughs> Trying to move something around here, there we go. Okay, and what if you don't add a second projector? So if you don't add a second projector, headlights 
will operate as normal, the turn signals will operate as normal. Um, so if we don't add a projector, the turn signal bulbs and everything is exactly the way they, um, exactly the way they operate like normal. Okay. Let's get this one going. Okay, so like I did before on the first one, using my little template with the, um, the extra screws to score the chrome that's inside of here so I know exactly where to cut or drill in this case. Hello, daughter. preliminary holes here. And we test. Hopefully this one's a lot closer, which holy Moses. Yeah, that one is definitely closer. I can already tell. All right. Waffles. I like waffles. All right. I feel pretty confident about that one. This one's going to should go a whole lot better. <laughs> uh, no. So this this headlight that I'm doing now is just a very clean, simple uh, upgrade for nighttime visibility only. There's no, no extra aesthetics, no halos, no demon eyes, no etching. Um, it's going to be a chrome, chrome headlight, chrome reflector. I'm sorry, chrome per, um, shroud and everything. So this one won't have any any of the extra flash or flare. So I'm actually going to. Uh, this is kind of like a completely off the wall or random live stream here. Um, but I do plan on making an event, maybe give a, maybe a giveaway. Hmm. Uh, so that way I can make sure people know that I'm doing this because there is a lot of, a lot of, um, intricate little pieces and parts that kind of come along with this. So I'll be doing a lot more of these and hopefully a lot more of, a, of an elaborate build because these, this one is very simple which is kind of why I wanted to start with this one. You did, sir. You did hear free. So, you know, one thing that I get a lot is, you know, asking for sales and discounts and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. But what people don't realize, the accounts that I have, the material that I sell comes from an incredibly the biggest aftermarket headlight supplier in the in the country and because of that i have agreements and i have uh restrictions on things and when i'm when and what i'm allowed to do the good news is that only applies to the stuff that you can buy off the shelf that does not apply to my custom headlights so there will be some giveaway maybe a raffle or something along those lines and uh that will have to do with um you know projector headlights and I think that's going to be a really big deal. So let's start since I got this one in this pr projector in, which 
already fits a whole lot better than the last one and see if we get anywhere we're close to where we need to be. Yeah, kind of. But why is that so fuzzy? Ooh. So let's say you buy headlights that have headlights. How would you wire them or to what? Help me understand what you're asking. I'm sorry. I'm not sure I, I fully understand the question. So if I buy headlights that have headlights, how would you wire them or to what? Hmm. Maybe I'm reading that wrong. Help me out, buddy. Sorry about that. That beam pattern is incredibly fuzzy for some reason. Oh, halos. So if these head, okay, that's a good question. So if you, I, if I understand correctly, if the halos, um, if you buy you know headlights with halos for me, is that what you're asking? Um, if that's a yes, I'll go ahead and answer that anyway. If that's not a yes, I'll answer this part of it anyways. Um, so there are numerous ways. What is this? Why is this acting this way? That's why. The shield is bent. Hold on a minute. There we go. That's more better. Huh. Okay. So what's, what happens is when you buy headlights or any projector headlights with halos for me. Oh, actually, first, before I answer that question, what car are we talking about? Is it a Crown Vic, Town Car, Marauder, Mar Marquis? Like, what, what kind of car is it? Because that does change the answer a little bit. There we go. Crown Vic, perfect. So um, on a Crown Vic, it's actually going to be up to the end user to do the final part of the wiring. So like if you were to say you were to buy a head, set of headlights for me today and I ship those headlights with, with, with halos and everything, basically what would happen is with every single headlight build that I offer, um, I do a, a video, I record a video for that customer, which that's going to change soon too. Um, I record a video for every customer showing how to install. And I do this for everybody. So that way they see their exact headlight in the video. It's a pain in the butt, <laughs> but, um, basically what you would do in, in a crown Vic instance, you would receive the halos. I'm sorry, the headlights with a couple of wires coming out of the back side of it. And the halos have, depending on which halos, there's a couple different options, but let's just pretend that we go with the sort of regular quote unquote RGB or, um, or switchback halo. So like a switchback halo has a power and a ground, just like every other halo or anything, any 12 volt accessory, but there's also a flasher wire. So what you would do, the bulb that comes out of the headlight in the turn signal. So I'll use this as an example. You know, this is your, your factory turn signal bulb and there's three wires inside of here, or there's three pins. So basically each one of these has a function. So one, I don't know which order, I'll have to check on that again, I don't have it in front of me, but one is gonna be your power, which is your constant hot, the other is gonna be your ground, and then the third one's actually gonna be your flashing wire. So what you would do is there's going, there would be like a pigtail uh, that plugs into this like normal, and on that pigtail, I give you T-taps and then it just plugs right in. You don't cut, you don't splice, you don't do any of that stuff. What happens is that the T-taps, if, if you're not familiar, will wrap around the wire itself and all you do is just crimp it down. You just pinch it with like a pair of needle nose pliers or something like that. And then you plug the wire into the T-tap. It's very simple. Um, you know, it's probably the least intrusive way, other, you know, aside from just cutting the harness, which I don't normally um, advertise for for like self self installers. So 
uh, yeah, that's it. It's super simple. It's actually really easy. I kind of, I feel like I've explained it um, and made it seem a little more difficult than it should have been, but. Cool. Thanks, Devin. Appreciate the heads up. All right. So I hope that answered your question. I, I feel like I did, but if I didn't, definitely help me out. And I actually feel like I need to re recheck my adjustment here. I feel like this is slightly crooked, so I'm just going to open up these headlights a little, or these holes just a little bit more, but that is very close. That's a lot closer than the first one. Cool. Absolutely. Any, any other questions, man, just ask. I love, I love um, answering these kinds of questions because I can understand how, how difficult some of this stuff might be for for some people. So please, if you have anything else, man, by all means, just ask. Actually, I just realized that I need to drill my, my vent holes and my wire holes. pretty good about that. Let's give that a try and see where we're at now. Okay. Let's mount this. Actually, I feel close enough where I could start threading these, the nuts back on these bolts again. I think this is going to be the final testing or the final aim or adjustment of this headlight because this other this one went so much smoother than the other one <laughs> that's how it goes though there's always something that kind of gets in your way causes issues go. 
All right, so I need my pick. Oh, there we go. That is way off. Let's bring these bad boys all the way in here. So what I'm doing now is adjusting the nuts that are attached to the bolts here, which then is going to obviously alter the direction of the beam pattern. Because it was too far to the, to the right, so I'm pushing the beam pattern to the left a little bit. Oh yeah, that did it right there. That's perfect. Now I just need to bring it straight up. We'll go one, two, three, or five turns. Oh yeah, we're getting there. One, two, three, Almost. That's it. Spot on right there, guys. We nailed it. Heck yeah. Cool. So I'm gonna put the washers on the th on the bolts here, and then put the the nuts that are gonna tie it down for good. forget guys if you're anyone's in here and wants to ask any questions or has anything they want to they want to bring up by all means feel free to do that I can I think I can multitask <laughs> I'm fairly confident that I can Spot on, guys. That's exactly what we're looking for. Cool. Okay. Now that that is good to go, we can start making the final sets. All right, let's power that down. What I'm going to do is just kind of make sure that all these bolts are as tight as they should be. Yes is the answer on that one. Yes is the answer on that one, but I am going to check adjustment on this one again. Look, how's the saying go? Measure, measure twice, cut once. I think. I don't know. Yes, sir. We're still in there. I do feel like that could be a little 
rotate it just a little. There we go. Let's see if I can fix that little bow on the side. Perfect. Okay, cool. Let's power this down and move on to the next step. Now that this stuff is all done, the projectors are mounted. Now this point is where I'm going to basically cut off all the bolts on the rear of the headlight here that I just installed. And I will be adding epoxy to those to make sure that it's permanently set. And uh, we'll get the shroud mounted and cut off because actually this part of it is this was the hardest part the next of the next kind of like it's not hard but the next part is basically getting the shroud on there in a way where it looks like it's meant to be there because there's so many people that i see that build these headlights with it sticking so far out and you can see that i push my projectors as far back into the housing as possible so okay let's go ahead and drop the grinding bit and put on the cutoff wheel. I'll check my phone for something real quick. Oops, sorry guys. Okay. Cool. All right. I was curious to make sure that the, yep, it looks good. Okay. So I have my cutoff wheel installed now. And I will be cutting up the, the bolts. AP, I'm late, but I'm here to learn. Excellent. Well, no, that's cool, man. I appreciate you for coming in. Uh, let me catch you up to the speed. So uh, what I did is um, obviously opened up the headlights, got the projectors ready to be installed. I then had the... I used, there's a wall, obviously the wall behind me, is a, it's a garage door. The door that's behind me has some markings that I use. So I mounted the headlight to the table, took some reference measurements on the wall, I marked it on the wall with some tape as well. And then you kind of missed the hard part, but I got the projectors fully installed. Now it's time to cut up these bolts and get them permanently mounted. So. I definitely appreciate you stopping by. All right, I'm about to make a little bit of noise. Hopefully this isn't too loud. That's what I'm after. Nice clean cuts. Bolts are ready to have some JB weld put on there. I'm gonna cut up the other side. Got the belly. There 
Here we are. Okay. And number two. Got that one cleaned up, ready to go. All right. So we have head we have headlights with projectors in them. So we're a good part of the way there. Um, what do I want to do next? I want to do the shrouds, but the problem with that is I don't. It's behind the camera, <laughs> so you can't see it. Uh, here's the shrouds we're using. Simple, clean, um, chrome shroud which would then basically just sit, which I got to, you know, do some cutting and stuff, but it basically sit and cover the projector and basically give it a nice finished look. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now is actually start taping the back. I think I'm going to get the projectors permanently mounted because I believe that that is the next best thing to do until I get the shrouds ready. So I'm going to flip these guys over. Now, there's so many ways to do this, and I've seen a lot of them that I would be, I would definitely not be happy to sell um, or put my name on it. I've seen some really shitty jobs at this. So uh, I use electrical tape to make a clean line all the way around the projector, so that way we can get a nice seal. And I'm going to take a minute to do that, and I'm going to give you a close-up once I get that far. Um, and there's a couple ways to go about this, and I'm going to show you my e the easiest way that I learned. Um, it's kind of hard to do that like this, but we're going to try it anyways. This will all make sense once I get that once I get this part done, I'll show you. I guess I really don't necessarily have to do this step. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that don't, but I'm really anal about the way things look. <laughs> and I don't like, uh, I mean, I understand that this is the back of the headlight and 90% of the people that ever see your car are never gonna see these this part of the headlight. That's not enough for me. I'm very particular, which might be part of my downfall. But I think it's one of the reasons why I'm relatively successful in this market. All right, so let me show you up close what I did, and I'll explain to you what I'm about to do. Because this part of it, oh, my back hurts. This part of it is 
purely optional, but I'm very, very, like I said, I'm very finicky or very picky with the way this looks. So what I did is I taped up kind of roughly around the back of the headlight and around the bolts. I'm going to take a really sharp knife and kind of outline a really clean line around this whole thing to then, so that way when I lay the epoxy, all I got to do is peel the tape and it leaves a really nice clean line all the way around. I'll show you that in a moment. Let's get a new blade. go all right so what I did you can't see it yet is I scored all of the tape with my knife so now all I do is lift this corner here sometimes it comes off in one big chunk, but not always. There we go. You're going to learn today. <laughs> So now what you're looking at is a decently formed, you know, decently formed line all the way around each nut and bolt, as well as on the inside of this projector where the, um, the epoxy is going to go. So I'm going to tape off the projector real quick and then move on to the next headlight. Forgive me, I didn't eat. I'm hungry. Hmm.
going to mark this one also like I did the last one. So this one's done. Same thing before. We'll peel the part that I cut. see same thing decently you know it's not pretty <laughs> it's not gorgeous by any means but it'll look but it looks better than it would have if I didn't do this so all this tape all the way around and let's add it to the projector and mix up some epoxy what that looks like. done and we're ready to spread some epoxy on there
bondo spreader, some epoxy. I think I need, I said bondo spreader, uh, bondo board. That's what I meant to say. Okay. A new package, because it looks like we're going to need a whole bunch for this one. You know what I think I'm going to do? Oh, what did I get? Sorry about that, guys. Yep, definitely time for some gloves. You're not lying there. Um, there is something I need to do, though. So I'm going to do something so I don't have to use as much uh, JB Weld. I have the steel stick, which is like putty. I'll show you that in a second. Grab my gloves. All right, so actually, I'm not going to be using the spray today. I'm going to be do, doing something a little different than, than what you've seen before. This one is sort of self-leveling, where the other stuff that you're referring to does need to be um, spread out pretty good. This one though, what I'm gonna do, so I use JB Weld to seal the nuts and bolts around the outside of the projector and these openings here, because obviously if I don't do this, it's gonna you know collect water. So instead of me filling this hole with you know liquid JB Weld, what I like to do sometimes is use the steel stick, which is like putty and Play-Doh. You mix it up, you knead it, and you kind of just lay it in there and it hardens up. So I'll, I'll lay that as a base, uh, base layer. So that way I don't have to go through so much liquid epoxy because that stuff is rather expensive. And this stuff goes a long way, so. Mm, pig. So well, now I just have to kind of knead this up a little bit to kind of mix the hardener with the epoxy. And once this is mixed, because it was gray and black, now once it gets all mixed up, it'll just turn one solid color, like a dark, real dark gray. Once it's all the way mixed, it'll look a little bit like this. And then I'll just break off small pieces 
and lay it inside of that channel so that way I don't lose any of the liquid stuff. Just kind of lay it down inside here. Like I said, all this is doing is just filling in the bigger gaps so I don't have to worry about the other epoxy dripping down in there because that is the literal last thing you want, especially after the projector is already mounted. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Been there and done that. Yes, sir. You got it. Having You have to mess up or else you don't learn. You don't mess up, you don't learn. I'm a firm believer of that. get to do anything for as long as I've been doing this without messing up either you know all right so as I said this is uglier than hell this part this step is ugly it doesn't look pretty in any way stretch you know any way shape or form um, but what I'm gonna do is let this cure for a minute and then we're gonna lay regular JB weld right over top of this and uh, let that cure for a couple of minutes. So while we're waiting, I guess I'll stand here and do nothing. Uh, actually, I lied. I do need to cut this. Oh, this is already pretty much done, so. Hey Pete, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, so professionally about five years. Um, I started my business in uh, August of 2018. However, um, I've actually been building lights and doing this since 2006. Um, I used to hit up the junkyards and buy Acu oh, beat up Acura headlights, pull the projectors out and put those in my cars. I used to buy uh, custom computer fans that had the little cold cathode, uh, like the glass tubes around the fan that like would be blue or green or whatever color you bought. I used to buy those and then fully disassemble them and put, um, put those in my headlights for halos. <laughs> so yeah, man, I used to do this way before it was the cool thing to do. I do need some more water. There's no question about that. My my tumbler's a little dry. All right. So we're gonna start putting some epoxy down here. And 
and this is this is the standard JB weld. I'm sorry, not the standard. This is the JB quick weld. Um, so it only takes a couple of minutes to set, which is nice. Um, but it is one to one. It's really easy to mix. It's just kind of a pain in the ass to work with sometimes, which is why I lay the uh, steel stick down inside of there first because it does run. Hell yeah, Acura what? What, what? what did you do to it? Definitely love to hear about that. I just did a, I just re, I recently did a, an Audi uh, A7 headlight. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I will never be doing another one of those. Okay. Excellent. All that's done and hardened up. Cool. So let me grab my little wooden sticks. I'll be right back. it's safe to go ahead and mix this up So now this part is going to look really ugly until we get the last little little bit done here. So let me show you what that looks like here. We'll start laying this down right over top of where I just was where I just was working. I may have mixed slightly too much, but that's okay. I've got a whole bunch of this. I think I have a case left. Don't be like me and put your finger right into the JB weld that you just put down. Okay. So I have just about this entire one done. There's one small spot that I got, then I can peel this tape before it gets too hard. And that's the trick here, because this stuff does set incredibly fast. Trust me, you do not want this, <laughs> this epoxy to set before you can peel the tape, because then you're going to be working extra hard trying to get that cleaned off. Okay. Yeah, I did mix a little bit too much, but that's okay. Okay, so now we're going to quickly peel this tape. Right around there.
we go. So now we only have JB Weld in the places that there was no tape, which I'm going to clean this up a little bit, but that to me looks a whole lot better than just laying it down and, <laughs> and spreading as much as you can. Let's see, what did you got? I put in an RGB strip, turn signal, and change the reflector from orange to white. Heck yeah. Awesome, man. Glad to hear it. Okay, now while this is still setting, I'm going to keep working it a little bit because I need to peel off some of this extra stuff that kind of spread. kind of wait for that to harden up a little bit but yeah that, that definitely looks a whole lot better than just simply putting down a, a bunch of this stuff actually I am going to grab that out of there there we go Okay, so now you can see, I'm going to show you real quick, you can see how like I had a little flare right there, it kind of fell on the thing. Once this, it's not, once it's not quite all the way hard, but still has um, like some, some pliable to it, you can actually cut that off and peel it in one piece without it actually smearing because it's liquid, you know, kind of a cool little trick that I kind of figured out one day. <laughs> You just got to catch it when it's just right. Like, this is still too soft. It's getting there, though. start mixing so that's the weird thing here is because since I dropped that little piece on on the the headlight there I don't want to start mixing um, more epoxy for the other side because then I might miss my opportunity to kind of cut this off to make it look better like I said I'm all about appearances and I just want to make sure that this this looks the way that it should it's taking its good old time getting curing So I think I am going to move on to at least getting it ready for the mix. So this is taking a little longer than I want it to. So we will peel this.
<laughs> Are you allowed to say that word? Moist? Isn't that like a forbidden word these days? Moist. It does feel kind of gross to say it, don't it? Moist. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's just when I hear the word, I mean, that's how it makes me feel. I think that's why I say it that way. <laughs> Feels gross. <laughs> All right, where are we at here? You done yet, you prick? Not quite, almost. Almost, almost, almost. Broke old. What a... I think I need to pin, pop a little hole into this bottle. Or bag or sleeve or whatever you want to call this. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Let's try not to mix too much this time. My guess is I probably won't mix enough. That's how it goes. Because that looks way too much already. Okay. Yeah, this is perfect. There we go. That's what I'm after. All right, guys, be nice to each other. <laughs> yeah, but Charlie's cute when she does it. I don't know. I don't know how that would look on you, Devin. Yeah, this is just about right. Okay, so let me show you what I was working on. Whoop. There we go. So there was like that spill 
right here that kind of had a little string that came up. I was able to cut that off now that it's actually set for the most part and peel it right back. Actually, Devin, that's a really good question. I actually did get somebody that um, reached out to me and offered their car. Uh, they said that they will be available to make the trip because I think he's in Virginia or West Virginia. No, he's in West Virginia. He said that he was going to make the trip so that way I could use his car for testing. So there is some, uh, some hope here, thankfully. To get these stupid taillights done. So I have um, a set of custom taillights that I built for the Crown Vic. They are fully addressable with uh, using the Blue Ghost controller as input, or yeah. And because of that car and it, the so it has four taillight bulbs, it has two bulbs in each taillight, and there's a lot of. Uh, weird finicky stuff with resistance and stuff when I sell, when I sell um, like LEDs and stuff. So I want to, before I ever offer these for sale on my website, I want to make sure that I'm able to, you know, run some tests and kind of make sure that these things are going to go off without a hitch. Cause the last thing I want is another freaking problem on my hands that I can't come back from. So I will be uh, hoping to get a car. Cause a lot of my 90% of my, my business is shipped. I mean, I do a lot of local installs, which I'm actually going to be putting a stop to that for a while. Um, whoa, crap. Look at that. Just opened up on the other end. Nice. Good job, Kevin. That might be too much hardener now. <laughs> well, it's only mixing a little bit. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, the last thing I want is just a problem child. So I'll be running a lot of tests. I'll have the car for, I mean, whatever he says. I mean, it's, I don't know if he's going to drive out to me or if, if he's going to leave the car or how it's going to work. But I figured it'd take at least a full day to make sure that the, the signals are working properly and how I'm going to do, you know, build in the resistors and all kinds of other stuff. So, whoops, I almost put it on the wrong headlight. That would suck. This is almost good here.
Okay, same thing. This is done. Now it's time to peel the tape. We gotta do that quickly. And again, I mixed up a whole lot. Definitely too much of epoxy. <laughs> I guess it's better than not having enough having enough to do the whole thing. Voila. Okay, safe to ditch the gloves. Dang, really open the, open that uh, epoxy pretty good. Whoopsie. All right, now we are done with that boring, incredibly boring step. See, that looks so much better than, which I mean, I'm going to clean up these little pieces and little stragglers here, but that looks so much better than if you didn't use tape. Uh, where are we at here? We got anybody in here? Wanna, anybody want to talk to me? <laughs> Three people. Woohoo! Okay, cool. Very nice. I'm not sure I know what you're uh, what you're referring to, Devin. Be nice if you could do something like that with something you could spray. What do you mean? Yeah, it would be nice. There, um, there are a couple builds that I actually used, like a regular, um, like a regular um, gasket maker type, like a, a, a silicone. I actually kind of like that. I didn't mind it. It does take a lot longer to cure. Like this is going to be done here any second. The other stuff does take, you know, a, a overnight before you should really handle it, but that stuff is a lot more forgiving too, <laughs> you know? And it's a lot more flexible. That's another thing too, because with road vibrations and stuff, it may be a good idea to have a little bit of flex because this is going to be rock hard here in a minute.
Yeah, exactly. The other stuff, you still have to do the tape, I guess. You don't really have to, but the, uh, the taping and stuff is what takes a lot longer. Then you got to mix it. The other stuff, you could just take a caulk gun and just squirt it right on there. Okay, so now that that is good, both headlights are, well, this one's definitely cure. This one's still slightly tacky, but it's good. So what I'm going to do, which is going to be really hard to demonstrate because the camera is not uh, facing that direction. I do need to go cut the shrouds. Um, So that way I can get this done. Everything else is done. Beautiful. All right. Now I am going to go put on more gloves, clean ones, because we're going to be messing with the shrouds a little bit. And since that is the cherry on top, definitely don't want to be fingerprinting it up. All right, so here's the next step. Um, I do need to get one more thing, hold on. stupid so the next best the next uh what i'm going to do at this point the next step is get these shrouds trimmed to where they fit inside the headlight without touching any of the sides or or look out of place in any way because that's the last thing we want we've already gone this far to make sure that it's nice and it's aimed properly now I just need to clean up this shroud and its mounting points because every time I try to load one of these things, there's these little tiny tabs in here that prevent it from going all the way in the way that I like it. Huh. <laughs> That's what she said. Is that still a thing? Do people still say that? <laughs> hey, there we go. Awesome. All right, so that's going to have to go this way. Oh, cool. All right. So I actually don't have to trim this too, too much. So I'm, I'm going to be out of frame for a moment and I'll be right back. And I apologize ahead of time. I'm going to be making a little bit of noise here. So bear with me. to trim this shroud so that way we can get that to fit um, because it is slightly too tall. Yeah, it looks 
pretty good. All right, so now the next step is this shroud is a slightly too deep because the Crown Vic has a stupid little tooth on the top. So I think I'm going to get my ultrasonic cutter out. Kobe, hey, it worked. <laughs> um, I'm going to get my ultrasonic cutter out, which I have no idea where it's at right now. It's probably, oh, wait, nope. Is it over here where it belongs? Nope. Where are you? Hello? Uh, hello? <laughs> I'm sure it's right in front of my face. That's gonna, that's the most embarrassing part. Oh, found it. Doi. All right. Yeah, the shroud will get a little warm, I guess, because of the projector and the bulb sitting literally just underneath it. Um, but nothing ever enough to do any damage or anything like that. It's a really, really high has a really, really high resistance, so nothing too, too worried about there. Okay. All right, so this guy here is my rather expensive um, ultrasonic cutter. Let me get this plugged in behind the camera here. So I want to use the cutter because, um, oh, yeah, technically, yes, it can be sanded, but in normally, in a lot of instances, it can be. The thing is, this is what I need to cut. I don't want to trim it, so no sanding for me. I'll, I'll just cut it because it makes a really nice clean cut. Yeah, it's one extra step, but again, you know me by now. You need to make sure that it's clean and the best possible that it could be. There we go. There we are. That should do it. Look at it. Nice clean cut. No heat, no noise, no sanding, no dust, no nothing. This, in theory, should slide right on. Siri, stop. There's nothing to stop here. Huh. There's nothing to stop here. And there you have it. All done. Well, almost. And that kind of looks like it belongs in there, I'd say.
Okay. Let's see if we're going to need the same amount of adjustment here. If I'm lucky, that would be a yes. joke. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Break. Yeah, looks like the same amount of adjustment. All right, I'll be right back. I got to step out of frame for a moment. this bottom part off with my kniff. And go and she's ready to go on brick all right and voila there's number two Looks darn nice if I say so myself, myself. How about into the into the big camera? Whoop, that way. All right. Guys, I think we're we're almost done. However, I actually do. I am gonna disassemble this one more time to kind of wipe this down, because not being uh, able to control a lot of the dust and stuff today, because it's been a little, a little out of place. I'm a little out of place, I should say. I think I'm going to disassemble this one more time. Pull the projector front half off. So I can wipe down the lens because I found that there's a lot of dust in there and I just don't want that in there in the finished product. So 
instead of me putting the lens on right now, like I would normally be doing, I am going to disassemble one more time, but that's okay. I think it'll be worth it after I cut these stupid teeth off. So I am going to mix a little bit more of epoxy just to kind of put, so these projectors are a little um, smaller. So the stage one projectors are H, H1 size bulbs and they're two and a half inch lenses. The stage two and stage three kits that I offer are both a three inch kit. So they don't need these little plastic rings that I had to put in here to help it kind of hug onto the projector. So I'm going to drop a little bit of epoxy on the inside of this shroud so that little ring stays still. Definitely don't need much. drop a little bit of this down in here now. good a little bit in here a little bit down on this one too cool all right So while that's curing, I'm going to disassemble these guys real quick.
Okay. So now that, oh, now that that's fully taken apart, what I'm going to do now is basically just wipe down the chrome and get it presentable for its final pieces to be assembled here. So first, I'm going to try to get the heavy stuff out with the compressed air. Excellent. So, all right. So what I'm going to do now is basically take the softest rag that I have and just lightly with the weight of the towel, because you don't want to press in on this chrome because this chrome is so fragile. You look at it wrong and it will scratch, I promise. So just ever so slightly, just drop this down in here and kind of push some of the dust outward. And what's nice is when you do this, even if it doesn't lift up all the way, it's at least going to allow me to get back in here with the um, compressor, the compressed air, and push out the rest. Yeah, that looks good. One more. There we go. Okay, so now the headlights are fully wiped down. I'm gonna wipe the projector. A little bit of hot breath. good. Okay. Next one. Excellent. She's clean and ready to go back together. A little bit more compressed air. OK. 
Okay. Let's Yes, sir. Then, you know, when I first started building lights, I actually would not do an all chrome build just because of how super uh, sensitive this chrome is. So if you look at any of my earliest builds, they're all painted. Every single one of them has paint just because I didn't, I don't, I wasn't, I didn't trust myself, I think. I think that's probably the most accurate statement. But now, you know, obviously over, gosh, 18 years now. I've developed a little bit of a knack for it, I suppose. Oh yeah, that looks so good. I'm excited. Putting the lens on here shortly. Actually, let me preheat the oven while we're reassembling everything. There we go. go all right now last little bit of adhesive or uh, of uh, epoxy I'm gonna go onto the projector the lens holder to hold the shroud on don't need much yet again Shoot, I forgot that one was open on the back side. Dur -dur -dur. <sighs> Gotta grab a paper towel to wash this hardener off my hand. Almost time for me to eat lunch. Fat boy is kind of getting hungry. What's for lunch today, Mr. Devin? Mango and a pineapple and some a sandwich. All right. So I'm in a. Let me uh, ask your recommendation here. So Mary and Brooke are en route to Cedar Point. So little Miss Charlie is in the cage, whoa, is in the cage at the moment. And it's me and my pooch the rest of the day. So I'm thinking about finding something nice to eat where I could eat outside and hang out with my puppy. 
Any ideas, any suggestions? Roll that upside down. got the fridge stocked <laughs> yeah we gotta we gotta keep ourselves fed us big boys gotta get our cal our, our daily calorie intake come on slide on there there we are All right, folks, that's it. They are finally done done. Just gotta smack the lens on and we're good to go. Man, that does look nice, don't it? Okay. That's true. I could do that. Are you talking? Are you talking about uh, Shorty C's, the place down the road from me? No, I do love their food, and that's probably my favorite place to eat around here. The thing is, I, I don't want to be at home. I guess I'm just kind of uh, looking for something to get out. You know what I mean? Jonathan, what's happening, man? How you doing? Um, yeah, dude, that's gonna be that's gonna be epic. I'm really excited about that one. And actually, I have a. Uh, um, the the secondary projectors I told you I was buying the the sort of backup to the stage two ones that I have they are already in route so we should be good to go as long as they work out the way that I sort of want them to we should be all set okay so the next step is I'm gonna grab my breather patches because I told you earlier, told you guys earlier that I wanted to add extra ventilation. And that's what we're gonna cover up right now. So we've got a breather vent there and a breather vent there. And we're gonna use these breather patches to cover up to make sure that we don't get any water, moisture, anything like that. Ooh, are you talking about uh, blazing bills? Because um, if yes, I am not on board with blazing bills after the last episode we had. <laughs> that was the worst. They're on some bullshit. That was the worst barbecue I've ever had in my life. Yeah, but you know what? Even the even the ribs that I received, you know, that was it you? Someone gave me some ribs. I'm pretty sure it was you. I don't know. Someone gave me ribs and they still they weren't really all that that wonderful. I wasn't really excited about them. <laughs> she probably is, yeah. Devin and Devin. Nice. This looks awesome. Very happy with the way this turned out. All right, so what I'm going to do now, while the oven is preheating, 
I will lay in some new headlight sealant so that way we can um, reinstall the lens. Where's my sealant? I grabbed it. Oh. This stuff. Oh, yeah. I might get a different box. What on earth is wrong with this sealant, man? I can't buy this stuff from here anymore. Oh yeah, you keep talking about that place. I, for, I keep forgetting about it. I mean, they might. They probably do sell crack. Oh, wait, am I allowed to say that? <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing now is just lightly pulling on this, this rope which is basically headlight sealant, rubber butyl. It is, and I'm pushing it as hard as I can into the channel where the lens is gonna sit. And then this is going to basically, once I heat it up, it's gonna be real soft, real pliable. And then I'll be able to push the lens, push the lens on. Oh yeah, double R. Forgot about that place. I think they have an outside too. I've just never seen anybody there. And they have a drive through I'm pretty sure. Forgot about that. A little more on the fast food side. I know Chipotle over here, and I think maybe most of them do, but I know Chipotle has a, a sit-down spot right outside. Gosh, I do not like this new sealant. Oh, I hate this. this up before working with it. Dang. So hard. When this this stuff that I'm using used to be the softer of the bunch, you know, of the of other options that were available. Now it's the hardest. How does that happen? The last one I got was too soft and it was all melted by the time I got it. Now this one is too hard and I can't even work with it. <laughs>
Very cool. So there you go. So headlights done. I have new uh, butyl rested and pressed into the channel. So once the oven is done preheating, this will go in the oven for, you know, five to seven minutes, probably seven minutes. And then uh, we'll press the lens on, put some clamps and let it go. I sounded like Tony as in like audibly sounded like Tony or the way I explained it sounded like Tony, the way Tony would have explained it. <laughs> I like legitimately hate this so much and I don't have anything else to use. truck. I'll be right back guys. I got to put a couple packages outside for pickup. Oh. I'm back. the oven okay oh I need this what am I doing These are ready to go in the oven for the final, final step. Yeah, I 
know I'm really complaining about this, but man, this butyl sucks. It's really hard to work with. I just hope it doesn't. I've dealt with butyl that was hard like this before. When I heated it up, it just like laid down and then like fell out instead of just got in there where it was supposed to be. So this looks okay. All right. Siri, set a timer for seven minutes. Seven minutes starting now. Seven minutes starting now. All right, let me grab the lens for this headlight. Get this sucky sucker ready. An electric hot plate and then setting it in. Um, Seeing that I don't know exactly what you're referring to, I would go out on a limb and say probably not. Guy. Bang, 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 bang. Thanks, man. this is but okay oh okay no I mean this stuff I just got this stuff I the other stuff I I had is never never that bad so I never had to really even think about that to be honest with you All right, we're all set. Let's grab this, set her there.
Yeah, it looks like two minutes. Well, I think we are almost ready to get that headlight out. Um, and that's it, I guess. I don't know how if I should let this thing ride out since we're already, what, three hours in? Where's my mouse? Oh, almost four hours. Holy Moses. No wonder my back hurts. <laughs> stay forever. How about them apples? All right, let's close that. Ooh. Hey Siri. Set a timer for seven minutes. Seven minutes All right. So this headlight is, owie, very hot. So now, carefully lay this down and clamp it up. Okay, well the good news is it's the sealant is a whole lot softer now that it's hot, but my goodness, I hate it. press and ooze all the extra stuff out of the channel. Okay, looks kind of like Frankenstein, but the lens is being pressed and kind of oozing down into the channel there. 
And this puppy is done, done. Well, it looks like us is only you at the moment there, Devin. <laughs> and that's okay. I know this isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but... There's got to be people out there that want to see it. Hey Siri, how much time left on the timer? There are no timers left. Oh, you're a liar, iPad. Yeah, I figured that's probably the case. And I know, like, I was my I was planning to do my original, oh, I'm sorry, my original plan was to do the live, my first headlight build live in the evening, and then, like, schedule it. But, you know, I woke up, and I'm like, you know what? I knew today was going to be a bit of a different day with, with everything else happening today. I thought, you know what? What the heck? And this was, like, a the perfect build to, to, to start with, because this is probably the most simple setup. Yeah, pretty much. Hey Siri, how much time left? Got it. Yeah, that's probably the, a good way to say it. Still a lot of work and still very involved, but in comparison to a lot of the other builds that I put together, this is probably the least um, involved. I do like how easy this is to to rip up. I'm over here dogging this this sealant, but the cleanup process is a whole lot easier because it is a little harder. <laughs> cool. All right. Voila. It's so pretty. Matter of fact, I'll toss that bulb in there. There she is. Hey Siri, stop. Siri, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes starting now. Don't want to 
lose this. I really keep telling myself, and I've been saying this for years, I need like oven gloves. Not mitts, but gloves. Because goodness gracious, this... I'm always burning my daggone hands. So that is good to go. Thank you, Devin, for sending that over to me. I'll take a look at that later. Of glove, I do. I remember that there was a commercial, or maybe it was on a show or something. I remember that. Yeah, I think the ones that I've seen before were like a black glove. They just look like a plain black glove, but they were sort of <clears throat> geared towards idiots who put their hands in ovens. Poor puppy, I hear I hear her whining. Mm. Ooh, this one don't wanna clip on nice. Come on, sucker. Play nice, prick.
Siri, so set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes starting now. Okay. I just put it back in the oven to kind of give it like its final press. And my goodness, you'd be amazed at how much extra sealant comes out of this, even after you've already made your first press. So because I got some sealant on the base of my, my silicone pad that's in the oven, I got to clean this up now, you dummy. Uh, the one actually is pretty good. He's usually the scaredest one of all. He don't like to be touched or bothered, but he's good with her. But the other one, who isn't normally very scared, screams and runs away. <laughs> he doesn't scream, but he just don't play. He just goes and hides, gets out of the way. Both of our cats are sissies. Yeah, tedious isn't the word, my friend. Just a lot of small details that I think a lot of people overlook. I really do. And we're about three or four minutes away from me showing both headlights fully done. So we are about to wrap this up here any minute. Siri, cancel the timer. Siri, cancel timer. Thank you. Yep, same thing goes on this side. It just squeezes out and you put it in a second time after I attach the clips and just squeezes a whole bunch of the butyl out, which is good. I mean, that means that you're getting a, a good seal.
Okay. Let me There we go. Ta da. That's them. We are all done. That looks pretty good if you ask me. I suppose that probably concludes everything. Um, yeah, we're four hours and 15 minutes in and we've gotten start to finish, got a whole headlight project done. Really happy with how clean and simple everything looks. Um, I have to do some cleaning and kind of wipe it up and basically get it ready for packaging, but that's it pretty much all set and ready to go. Um, yeah. Anyway, I appreciate anybody who, who actually did stay to check this out. Devin, I know that you've been here for about 90% of the whole thing. So thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. Have fun. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll probably be doing this again at some point in, in the future. Thank you.